Does the Crown XLS 2000 make its rated power? In today's video, we are going to be Dyna testing this amplifier, showing you the insides and seeing if it lives up to its name. So for those that have been following along watching my videos, you would know that I use this amplifier quite a lot. And whenever I've used it, apart from one occasion, these amps have never given me problems and they've always done from what I could observe decent power but i never had the measuring devices to really test this amplifier and see if it puts out the wattage that it claims by the manufacturer so in today's video we are going to do just that i'm going to show you around the amplifier i'm going to show you the internals the features and what this thing can really do the build quality is a bit on the cheap side by no means is this crown's best amplifier if anything this is probably one of the most budget friendly options that crown has to offer however Everything Crown has learned over the years has been put into this amplifier. So it's heavily optimized where it's just got the right amount of components where everything has a place and it does something. So let's think about this amp has just got the right amount of stuff in it to make it work. Nothing more, nothing less. So weighing in at about 12 pounds, hey Siri, 12 pounds in kilogram. 12 pounds is 5.44 kilograms. For my UK people. It's a pretty light amplifier at five kilogram. So underneath you got, you can see the mounting holes for the screws that hold in the circuit board. At the top here, you got thermal clip, minus 10, minus 20 signal. You've got your volume controller, your manual previous next, same this side. The air comes in for the front, exhausts out the back, and then you got a nice robust on button. Looking at the back, we have a resettable fuse kettle lead as we call it in the UK, Nutrix. This model of amp was built in 2013. You've got banana plug inputs for your channels or you can go bare wire. Obviously the two reds will be when you do bridge mode. The fan, quarter inch XLR RCA and then also these are connected. So if you put RCA in, these will work, etc. Whatever you put in, you can use the other ports to daisy chain other amplifiers. Let's turn on the amplifier so you can hear how it sounds. It does have a really nice clicky sound when you turn it on. That is one good thing about crowns is their relays are always the best. So a little fun fact for you guys who own crowns. There's a secret menu. If you hold down these three buttons, I'm probably not doing it justice doing it that way. So if you hold down these three buttons here, you get put into a secret menu where you can see the power supply temperature and low voltage rail, your channel temperatures, your rail voltage, and then the firmware version, and how many times there's been like, it's got its own little like, uh, let's say it's, it logs when someone's either broken something in the amp, and I don't think you can reset it. So as you see, this amplifier has never had a fault with it. So that's good to know. And then back to the start. Another thing this amp does as well is if you hold down previous and turn on the amplifier, so if we go like that, the fans ramp up full speed, all the lights show, and it's like a self-check mode where you can test all the buttons, and then it returns to its operating state. So looking at the DSP now and what features this has to offer, right now we're in bridged low pass. If you hold that down, you have amp mode more. If you press these, you can turn off or on the clip limiters. So channel two clip limiter, channel one clip limiter, and you press menu and you can turn it off or on. So next we have, if you go here, hold it again and press into this mode, you can choose between bridge, stereo, or input Y. Click it again, you get low pass or high pass, or bypass or crossover. <laughs> Very cool. But Crossover is only available on the input Y. So when I use this amplifier, I would normally use it to power subwoofers. So I would go bridge low pass, and then my low pass will be set around 50 Hertz. It can go up to three kilohertz. So it only has between 50 Hertz and three kilohertz, both on low pass and high pass. That is the range you can set it at. But obviously when we do the dyno testing today, I'll be leaving this amplifier in bridged bypass allowing the full spectrum to be played through the amplifier so now let's turn this off and unplug it because we're going to open it up and show you guys the internals to get into this crown you've got two screws here three screws at the back and then another two screws around 
that side. I've now carefully removed all the screws holding the top case of the crown on. So I should be able to pull up and slide back like that and then pull this bit up. Perfect, put this to one side. And here is the look inside of the Crown XLS 2000. As you see, it's very minimal. The board solder is very high quality. It's pretty good, even for a budget amplifier, everything is very clean. So you've got your two channels here, your rails, and the transformer is so small, look at that, tiny transformer. Your power supply caps there. So on the rails, we have 125 volt caps, and we've got two of them, and they are 4,700 microfarads. On the power supply side, we have 200 volt, you probably can't even see that, but they're 200 volt, 1800 microfarads, and there's four of them. But anyway, that's the inside of this Crown amplifier. As you can tell, it is very clean, and yeah, for something budget, put together really well. Anyway, let's put the case back on, and let's get this on the dyno. And let's talk numbers. Does this thing live up to the 2100 watts that it claims at foreign bridged? We're going to find out. Okay, so we're going to do a 40 hertz test. Foreign bridged. Crown rates it at 2100 watt at 1 kilohertz at 0 0.5 THD. We're going to do 40 hertz as I use this for bass. Will it still do 2100 watt? It sure does. It does more than 2,100 watt. We've got a little bit more. Great. So from the wall, we drew 2,539.7 watts. And we outputted 2,165 watt. That means we have an efficiency, I'll put it on screen now, of 85.23 at 4 and bridged at this wattage. So it's still pretty efficient. Very nice. So for this one, we're going to do 40 hertz burst. And I've done it where we're just clipping a little bit at just the top of that row voltage. So let's see if we get more than the 2165 we got on the continuous sound wave. So yeah, it has got some dynamic headroom in there. Very nice, 2000. 328 watt. Okay, so we're now going to run 1 kilohertz up until slight clip and see what we get. So this is 1 kilohertz at 4 ohm bridged. So just from the fact that the meter tripped means I was exceeding 3000 watt, which means I'm expecting the efficiency on this test to be not that great, but we'll have a look. So that was the power meter that's connected to the amplifier. When it exceeds 3000 watt, it will turn off. So let's have a look at the numbers. We got 2212 watt, but we had to pull 3,043 watts to get that. So that brings our efficiency down to 72.7%. In this one, we're now gonna see if we've got any dynamic headroom at one kilohertz. So we're now gonna run one kilohertz just up until clipping and see if we've got any dynamic headroom. We're going to go that again because I've got a little bit more volume to go. So if we just turn up just a little bit more and we'll run that again. Just be 
up into a, maybe a little bit of clip in this one now. Oh no, we're still good. Just ever so slightly touching the rail. Nice. Now we're going to clip it. So we're going to now increase the volume. And send it. Two thousand seven hundred seventy-five into clip, for well, hard clipping to be honest. But yeah, that's not bad power at all. That is pretty impressive for the sort of amplifier it is. We have now reached the end of the video, and we're now going to perform two ohm bridged. So this is going from four ohm bridged to two ohm bridged. Do we get more power? No, we don't. It seems as if the amplifier has its own limiters in it, which won't allow it to draw excessive current at 2 ohm because it would break. Very clever. I'll run it again for you guys so you see it's not a fluke. This amplifier will not let you pull more current than the circuit was designed to handle. So I'll run it again. And as you see, it's not clipping. Very clever. So guys, that wraps up the Crown XLS 2000 video. And as you can see, it's a really clever amplifier. It exceeds its ratings and it handled back to back runs. This is a very light amplifier and it still puts out over 2100 watt. We got it in, but we got peaks of up to 26, 2700 watt, continuous sine waves of 21, just over 2100 watt. And yeah, even though it's light, it still packs a punch, this little amp, and has many cool protective features to prevent people from breaking it, which is pretty nice. But yeah, thank you for watching. Please bear in mind. This was my first dyno video, so I may not get everything correct, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. And if you want me to dyno an amplifier of your choice, drop it down in the comments and I'll do my best to try and make that happen. Take care guys.